Hi everyone, I'm Katie and I'm the artist for Personal Artwork and today I'm going to be doing a um, the start of a portrait of a working type cock cocker spaniel. Um, she's black and she has a white bib so I want to get some of that white into the portrait. Um, I'm going to first start this tutorial, well I'm going to do the tutorial from start to finish so I'm going to do it all the way through um, how I draw um, dogs. There will be a range of techniques that you can learn from these videos. I'm going to first start off today doing the eyes and it's mainly because when I do a portrait I start with the eyes. Um, so I'm just going to minimise this picture so you can see the sketch that I've done so far. So I've got a basic outline of her face just to give an idea of where all the different parts are of her face. You, so you've got a nose, a very loose sketch of the eyes, and it's just given me an indication as to where the colours will, will change. Now, you might find that when you're working, you will change this. Um, just because it is such a loose sketch, it is just to give you an, an idea just to, you know, of size and proportion getting those proportions in the different shapes, how the nose comes comes down um, and around the eyes, it's quite important just to pick out um, these few um, details. So I'm just going to zoom in to where I'm going to be working. So today I'm going to be working on the eyes and I'm going to be using polychromos, Faber-Castell polychromos and I'll use a touch of the luminance pencils. Um, I'm only going to be using the black and the white luminance pencils, you'll see. I'll try and do as much of this video in real time as I can. If there are any areas that do take a long time, that are quite straightforward, then I will just uh, speed it up for you. So I'm just going to get started on the lightest areas of the eye with coloured pencils. Um, it's important just to start with the lighter colours and then blend in the darker. So first of all, you'll notice that there are quite a few reflections in her eye. And I'm just going to mark out where they are. So I've just put in the sketch here where the darkest areas meet the, the reflection. So I'm just going to mark out where... where I want that reflection, just with the luminance pencils, just so I can avoid when I come to put in the black. That will blend quite easily. Now I'm going to start with the lightest parts of the, um, the edge of her eye. So See, straight away I notice this part of my sketch is a little bit wrong because the, the shape comes round. So I like to correct as I go, go along. And this is quite dark round here. So I'm just going to... Now every eye is different, of course. But with Jess, her eyes in this picture are very round. You'll sometimes find that with shadows and things like that, the shape, <coughs> excuse me, the shape can become um, a little distorted um, and it will appear depending on what which angle the, the head is at. So I'm just going to start with this ivory colour round here. And it's all about just picking out where the colours are. And then we've got this burnt ochre. Just come in again with the burnt ochre. Now it's important to have nice sharp pencils for this. So get your sharpener out. There. 
Now I'm just going to erase my sketch marks because I don't want it getting all the smudgy around here. There. Nice light layer. And it's important to use light layers and just build up the colour. So much easier to blend when you're not going hard at it. There, so that's a nice that's a nice base to start with. Now I'm just going to look at the reflections because there is quite a lot of blue in there. So I'm just going to pick out the blue and work out what blue it is. <laughs> it's quite important to um we've got a bit of blue. It's quite important to pick out those different colours that you see within the eye reflection. A little bit of blue and there's also a bit of green in there, so we'll get that in there. Turn a little bit of green here. There we are. Right, so I'm just going to blend in some of this burnt sienna and then we'll start getting some form to the eye. It gets a bit darker as we come up here. I do love burnt sienna, it's one of my favourite browns to use, especially with eyes. As you can see from the size of the pencil, it's uh, this this has been replaced, goodness me, I don't know how many times. You can use just circular motions just to get that to, to blend in. You see, it just gives a nice subtle change of colour. And you'll notice it's it's dark around the edge. Just start getting that shape in there of the eye. <clears throat> now normally if I'm doing a, a portrait for a customer, I would use a a piece of paper just to put my to rest my hand on because uh You don't want it smudging. But this is just for, for showing you how I work. Just for tutorial purposes. Right. So you can see now where where the shapes are. And this does come round a little bit. Now there's quite a lot of grey in the reflection as well. I'm just going to quickly sharpen the pencil. <clears throat> I'm going to use a cold grey because some of the colours in Jess's fur you'll notice are quite cold. So I'm just going to just start building up these colours in the reflection. So we're going to go with the grey first. Lightest colours first. We've got the white in there. And just play with it. Work with the different colours that you can see. Every artist is different. Everyone will work differently, but 
Sometimes it's nice to see how other people work and then you can adapt how you work. Sometimes it helps. So this part of her eye you'll see in the photo. Always look at your reference photo and just see how the colours meet. So you'll see here there's a bit of a change in colour. It's quite dark there. And you'll see that it gets lighter around here. I'm just going to use the ivory again and you can use your lighter colours just to blend. So it's looking quite good already. We can certainly see the shape of a lovely face, of a lovely eye rather. And now we're just gonna go in with the darkest colors around the edge. Go in gentle. I use circular motions quite a lot when it's not very um, definitive. So if it's just a gradual change of colour, I like to use just circular motions. And there's always a gradual change of colour. There's not, you know, it doesn't go from this brown to black. There is a gradual change of colour. In here, it's quite a dark area here. There we are. We've also got a bit of a reflection here as well. Just blend those in. Apologies if you can hear any movement around the house. It's um, the children are at home because we are in lockdown, of course. So uh, moving around upstairs with the dog. So you'll be able to hear them. So here we have it. That's most of the dark area done around that part of the eye. Now it's quite a strong bit of brown here. Let's bring that up a little bit. Like I say, as much as your, your sketch will be, it will be very loose, so you can just make changes as you go along. Now at this point, don't go straight in with the black. You need to start working up your colours. So I'm going to be using a darker grey than what I was using before. So let's get some of that in there. Um, this is a warmer grey, just because it's, it's going to be where it's meeting the black. Bit darker. And her eye comes round here, not how I've done it in the, I don't know why I've done, sketched it like that, but hey ho, like I say, we'll make changes as we go along. I don't like to spend too much time doing sketches because you could be there all day and then you'll find that you'll still make changes when you come to do the the portrait itself so this reflection comes down here a little bit 
and then up here. Now I'm going to be using the dark sepia. <coughs> this blends quite well with black, so I'm going to be uh, adding quite a lot in there, the dark sepia. Now you don't have to be absolutely perfect with the reflections, it's just to, to get the main colours in there. Because again, you could be there all day getting the, those reflections in, especially if it's a close-up photo like this one where um, you can actually see me and my son with the playing with the dog in the garden um, in the photo. So right, so that's. most of those areas done and again blend away blend 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 so now I'm just going to start adding in some of the black and here you'll see <clears throat> the strength of the luminance pencils you might have seen the um, video that I did on different coloured pencils and you can see straight away how how strong they are as opposed to the the polychromos I'm just using very light layers again but when there are very definitive lines it's great to use a, a luminance pencil there's quite a strong black reflection there I don't like to use it for all of the all of the black in the eye just because they are pretty strong and then if you want to get a, a variation of color especially light reflections it's good to um oh, I'm just going to lift that back out I do find that they don't erase as well as the um, polychromos either, so you need to be quite specific with them. Now I'm just going to put in, this is very black around here, as you can see from the photo. I'm just going to add that in. Now, I haven't done this sketch great. So just look at the different shapes that you have going on with the eye. This is all black here. Fill in those areas. This comes across and up. Of course, your your eye that you're going to be working on is going to look different to this one. Um, so it's uh, just to give you a good idea of the technique that I use. So 
get some shape into there. This bit's very black. does have a little a little bit of her eyelid showing on there so I'm not going to do that with the luminance pencil just because it like I say they are very strong and quite hard to to erase you can blend them very well but if you want a very um strong line like that it's good to it's good to do it with the polychromos instead Let's go back to the reflection. Sorry, I do go off on a tangent sometimes. You'll notice on um, the other video that I did on the, the dog's nose, I kind of went off on. on what I was doing. That's fine, just do how you do. A bit of black in here. And in there. I don't want to do all of this black bit with the luminance because like I say I like to I like to blend and I don't want it to be start black. So I'm just filling in those really black areas. there. Right, so now I'm going to start blending using the Polychromos black pencil. Give this little one a bit of a sharpen. It's a little bit of a stubby one this one because uh, it's been a bit overused I think. So I'm just going to blend. Again, circular motions, tiny little circles, get that pigment blended in. This comes down a little bit here. Keep looking at that reference photo. get quite dark here so I'm gonna add a little bit in there just gonna start blending some of this
Now straight away you'll notice when you put the black on, like how I've done here, some of your colours look a little bit washed out. And that is just because of the contrast with the, the black as opposed to your white paper. So you'll find that you'll want to go over them again. <clears throat> but by this point you'll have a good shape. There, so I'm just going to add some more of the the browns in here. Just blend them in. I'm going to go over this. It's starting to look more like an eye now. <laughs> so there we are. And I'm just going to go with this um, walnut brown. And I'm just going to go a little bit darker in here. That will be the shadow, a bit more in here. And I'm going to add a bit more walnut brown, just where the reflection meets. Where the reflection meets the rest of the eye. We'll get that shape in there. Now I'm just going to add some more of that blue. going to blend these bits around here. Sorry, I'm just looking at the reference photo as I'm working so if I pause it's just because I'm looking at the different shapes in the eye. That's what's most important. It's all good doing a nice drawing but if it doesn't look like the photo well, it's okay, I guess, but um, I like to do it uh, photorealistic as possible, really. There we are. Now I'm just going to go back in with this burnt ochre, because this is the probably the strongest colour around the eye. Now, because we've added the other layers underneath, you will need to add a little bit more pressure. There we are. That's looking much better. Now I'm just going to blend a few of these bits on the 
on the reflection just because where we've picked out the different shapes it can sometimes look a little bit too defined as it were so I'm just going to blend them in and the main white parts of the of the eye you'll see are you know these reflections here at the top Just going to blend these in. And then we seem to have lost a little bit of the black. Don't worry, you can just go back in again with the, the luminance pencil and see how they blend with the polychromos. Too very black here. Now, if you have any questions at all while you're watching this, then obviously feel free to drop me a comment on the video, or you can pop over to my Facebook page and drop me a message. I'm normally quite uh, quick at responding to messages, so I'm more than happy. I'm just going to lift out some of this colour here because it is quite a strong reflection. <clears throat> and just add those blacks back in. Yeah, you can go over to my Facebook page, um, it's just part of the personal artwork, um, and just drop me a message. Got quite a strong black bit here, so I'm just going to add that in. Now you'll find when I come to do the um, the nose on this, which I'll be doing probably next after I've done the other eye, um, I'll probably need to do some time lapse parts just because they do take quite a long time to do. I mean I know the eyes take a, a long time, but I'm only doing one eye in this video. just to show you how the pencils work together. Now I'm using this very, very lightly here because I don't want it to be too defined. And then I'm just going to blend this area here again. Now there is um, a lighter part, obviously where the the light is hitting the eye um, here and also around here. So I'm just going to get those in just using the luminance pencil. And you see how strong that is to to apply. Now, if I was to use the polychromos, it would take a little bit more pressure. I'm just going to re-add the reflection in there. And then it's just a matter of... Um, double checking with the reference photo I mean straight away I can see this reflection here is a little bit too long so I'm just going to shorten that a 
the polychromos are a lot more subtle than the luminance. But as you can see, they work very well together. It's always worth, even if you just get a black and a white, it's, it's always worth having both if you can. If finances will allow, because I know the uh, the luminance pencils that do get quite expensive. I haven't taken the plunge to buy a, a full set as of yet, so. Only because I'm I'm really happy with the the polychromos and I can't really justify not using them. So I would like to use both. Right, so I have most of the eye in there and I'm just going to start adding in the black around her eye. Now these parts are very black. Now I don't want to go all the way to the top here because I have fur sort of interrupts the the shadow. It's not a straight shadow all the way around. It comes down. quite dark there right so I'm just going to work on this bottom bit here where I didn't want to use the the luminance just because it you'll you'll notice it's very a very subtle change I do need to add the base of the eye there. This comes round. And there is quite a heavy reflection on the bottom. So I'm just going to put that in. Don't keep your, your paper white. Use your white pencil. I'm just going to erase that because obviously got a bit mucky with a black pencil. So I'll just give it a quick wipe there. Going to go back in and add some more of that black, and then the polychromos just for the the gentle, gentle, gentle. There we are. I'm just going to zoom out so you can see how it looks from further away. And I'm not quite happy with the way the the reflections have blended there. So I'm just going to go over these.
That's a little bit more subtle, isn't it? Just blending it in. Um, just going to redo that green as well, just to blend it in. And I'm just, the grey that I'm using is just the dark sepia. It's quite a deep grey. It's very good to blend the black in with the, the colour. This is a bit more defined around here. And where it meets the brown, just use your dark brown pencil. Blend that in. There. So it's subtle, subtle changes. It makes a big difference. Now, you may see the photograph different to how I do. So you might be looking at it thinking, oh, I would have done this. I would. That's brilliant. That's what you need to work on and do your art how you do it. You don't have to copy how I've done it. Um, everybody is different and will see things in a different way. So don't take this as, um, you know, the way and the only way to do it. Of course, there are several different ways and you'll develop your own techniques over time. So we're getting close to finishing up now. I'm just going to add a bit of this grey just to blend this in a little bit because it's a bit too white. And here... And in here, you can hardly see this bit, but it's there. And I like to get it in. I'm just going to quickly go over the black in here. Because it is quite a strong shadow in here. And then very close to the edge there. So I'm going to be doing a, a tutorial later probably on um, on the nose. So I'm going to get the eye done. So I'm going to get the other eye done. Um, and then we can work on the nose and then we'll start working on more of the portrait. So that's pretty much it for the eye. Um, the main thing that you need to remember is, uh, of course, starting from, from light to dark. And then don't be scared of adding colour. If you see those colours in the reflections, get them in. Um, I'm just going to add a bit more of this orange. I'll call it orange, it's not. It's just an orangey brown, it's the burnt ochre. And use your lighter colours to blend. Very important to get those blended. And then if you want to lighten it, you use your lighter colours. Your white. You see how that's given quite a defined white area there. And then burnt sienna, I'm going to go in with just because I love it and because I can. 
You do it however you want to do it. But this is how I do, so there we are. So that is pretty much it for, um, for the eyes. I'm going to do the other eye and like I say, I'll, uh, I'll be doing the nose shortly. So keep an eye out for the next part. Um, I'll put the link on the end for part two. Hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, then just drop us a link um, below in the comments section. Or like I say, you can drop me a message over on my Facebook page. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.